One of the most intimidating parts of flying both in the real world and in flight sims is communicating with others over the radio. There's a lot of jargon and specific procedures to know and it can get pretty overwhelming. In this video, we'll go over your first steps into this world by showing you how it's done by the military. When you hear military aviators talking on the radio, it sounds like they are all reading from the same book of phrases. That's because they are. In fact, there are several books like the ones I used to make this video. There are two big factors behind this, clarity and brevity. We get clarity in radio calls by using standard phrases. Non-standard and improvised phrases lead to miscommunication and aircraft mishaps. So we want to use the same language whenever possible. Brevity is important to us because every second you are talking on the radio is a second that is unavailable to the controllers or other pilots. Provide the information needed, nothing more, nothing less, and in the format expected. Now before we dive into the specifics, you should understand the two overriding rules of radio comms. This is right out of the official publication. When uncertain of the meaning of standard phrases, clarify with plain language. You heard that correctly. Plain language is perfectly acceptable if you don't know the proper phrase. A military professional will not scream at you for being new and not knowing the brevity codes. In fact, they'll probably offer to mentor you on the subject. If someone in a video game ever gets angry at you because you spoke in plain language, just remember that's not how real professionals act. Local procedures may vary from what you're used to. You should expect to find organizations that do things differently from what's in your book. That's just a part of life. A good example of this is in the military it's typical to state your call sign before you relay your message. But ask any civil aviator and they will say the call sign comes after the message. You'll see variations like this even within the military and it will usually be spelled out in a local procedure. This is normal, just make sure everyone involved understands the meaning of any variations. And if not, remember you can always fall back on plain language. There is a standard radio format used across the US military that goes like this who I'm calling, who I am, what I want to say. And it sounds like this. Fang 1-1 Magic Say Intentions. In this example, Magic wants to know what Fang 1-1 intends to do next. It's brief, clear, and straight to the point. If you need help remembering the order, just think of the following phrase. A, this is B, where is C? You can also adjust this format if appropriate. For example, if you are on a frequency that is just you and your wingman, then using full call signs is pretty redundant. So you could shorten a directive call to go to tactical formation to the following. Two, go tactical. When immediately responding to an in-flight directive like this, the number two pilot can just say two. In this case, you don't need to say a full call sign in message. Just saying two lets the lead pilot know you understood the command. In the example we used earlier, Fang had a number and Magic didn't. These call signs are assigned and are not the pilot's nicknames. Since Magic didn't have a number, it means there are no other units in the area with that call sign. Fang, on the other hand, is probably not the only formation in the air with that name. Each aircraft will be assigned a unique call sign with the prefix word and a numeric suffix. The last number tells you the position within that flight. So Fang 1-1, not Fang 11, would be in the same flight as Fang 1-2. Fang 2-1 and 2-2 would be members of a second, separate flight. If you've ever heard people talking on the radio, you've probably heard them use certain phrases like Roger, Say Again, and Wilco. These are standardized words or phrases used to condense messages in a way everyone can understand. They're called procedure words, or pro words for short, and have their roots in Morse messaging from the 1800s. Today, every radio operator should know the following pro words. Feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to look over the words. If you've ever said bravo to mean the letter B, then you've used the NATO phonetic alphabet. This alphabet was something NATO came up with in the 1950s to overcome the challenge of miscommunication when you have people from different countries with different accents working together. Over the radio, the letters B, D, E, G, and T can sound the same. This can present a problem if you're trying to spell something out quickly over the radio. It's a good idea to memorize the NATO phonetic alphabet. I'll leave a link in the description to NATO's website where you can take a look at this chart yourself. When we're talking on the radio, we want to use some code words to help us keep messages short and work towards the goal of brevity. For this, we use brevity codes, which are spelled out in this publication. When referring to friendly units, use the word blind for lack of visual contact and visual for positive visual contact. The following two terms are used to refer to non-friendly units. No joy means lack of visual contact and tally means positive visual contact. 
It's important to understand the distinction between these terms because each word conveys a specific meaning. When a wingman says tally on the tanker, it leaves me wondering if he plans on doing aerial refueling or shooting down the tanker. Also, I've heard people say I have joy, and I think that's great that they're happy, but I still don't know if they have visual contact with the hostile aircraft. We're always aiming for clarity in our radio comms, so we use different words to indicate contradicting information. We do this because over a static-filled radio, tally and no tally sound alike, but tally and no joy are distinct. The Brevity publication has way too many codes to go over in one video. As we cover more topics in this channel, we'll go over the Brevity codes that are specific for each area. In the meantime, you can practice using the pro words and Brevity we talked about until they become second nature. Then it'll be a lot easier to add more codes to your mental dictionary. I hope this was useful, and thanks for watching.